Hey YouTube, what's up? Scarecrow here. Uh, I am here today to do a updated uh, look at my uh, Gaia deck. It's changed a little bit. Uh, now I've got even more playtesting done, so we'll get started. Um, first, the most important change I would say is I've switched from the new uh, starter, the Child Dragon, to uh, Baby Kamara. This card is just better. Um, the new one was pretty cool. Um, it was cool that you got two cards off it, but the fact that the card has to move to the soul as the cost was what was wrong with it. Uh, Baby Kamara, you can keep giving it the Gaia skill, sacking it, it resurrects and gives you a new card, and just this card is just better because you can keep using it. Um, and the buffs it gives makes your columns like able to hit. The other one's like a one-hit wonder. Um, the soul. Soul helps, but you have enough like soul building options in the deck. So I think Baby Camera is definitely the way to go. It's like a much better starter in my opinion. Uh, my trigger lineup hasn't really changed. I'm still playing the four cannon, the four gator, four draws, and four heals. Um, it's running pretty well. Uh, like, the stand trigger isn't, like, bad. It's not great either, though. So, the 3k from the draw helps a lot of situations. So, I don't know, though. Stand is out of the question. Just, uh, the grade ones. Uh, playing four damage and flipper. Uh, the engorge unit is pretty okay, especially when you're running, uh, baby Kamara. But I just prefer the consistency of the counter-charging perfect guards. Uh, the engorge perfect guard, there's not that many situations where I actually want to use it. And it eats up resources, so. Uh, then I'm playing for Terra. This card is super good. The fact that it revives and can get a counter-charge. So if you plan your turn right, you can pay your counter-blast for other effects. Resolve him, revive, unflip. Really good card. Uh, three Prison Bird or Stride Father and help us make sure we ride the right Gaia. And then three Feaser to get our counter charges back. Um, grade twos uh, for the 10k. This card is amazing. It's big and it's a 10k uh, on grade two. Super good. Um, the grade 2 lamp is pretty much the same, uh, playing 4 Diablo still. Uh, this card is good, but it's not like super duper good. I experimented like cutting it down and stuff, and I'm back to playing it. Um, if nothing else, it's just been a consistent 11k. Um, the revival effect is very cost heavy, because he has to get engorged, and then you have to engorge him, and then you have to discard. But he can still push really hard, so... Um, He's really good on the dogma turns. Uh, that's why I'm still playing him at 4. And then the last grade 2. Two of our tank. Gigit Flame. Uh, you don't want to ride this card. But once you get to grade 3. This card is like. An amazing grade 2. Might be like arguably your best grade 2. Uh, for the grade 3's. 4 OG Gaia. The card you need to ride. Uh, one of the not very good Gaia. Uh, he's there just to have like an extra ride target. You can, but if you ride him, you're probably not gonna win. You can only afford to be on him maybe like one, maybe two turns. He's a very not good card on Vanguard. He's a decent rear guard, but he does have the guy name, so he's just like an extra ride target until we can ride the proper card. And then last, uh, three heavy arson or arson, whatever this card's name is. This card's pretty good. Uh, it's cost heavy, but it rewards you back. So, it's a good card. Um, under the G zone, the G zone's changed a little bit. Uh, I'm now playing, back to playing one uh, Grado Gigant. This card is a really strong first stride. Uh, the fact that it's like hits big, engorges, and you get a draw, it's, it's good. Not every situation do you want to stride um, the next card to uh Gaia. Um he's a good first stride, but you don't always want him. He's he's like a field control thing and he is good. Um like 
it's just not every matchup do you would you prefer to go this to this especially if your opponent doesn't have like a field for you to rip up so and if you're only going to kill like one rear guard with it you might as well just get like the extra draw so um, I'm also down cut down on uh, devastate I'm only playing two devastates now uh, this card does not help you against Link Joker as much as you might think. Um, it can be more helpful against Messiah, and Messiah you would want it for probably, but we got to play like our options. What we're more worried about is playing against Star Vaders, and a Star Vader player, at least a good one, will, against certain matchups like this deck, will know its weakness is this card, and then it will go, okay, I'll just make sure you have five locked rear guards. If you have five locked rear guards, he can't become engorged, and if he can't become engorged, he can't eat like cards to like use his effect to do his thing and blow up stuff. So, if you have five rear guard locked rear guards and he can't engorge something when he swings, he doesn't do anything. Um, he's still like a good card. He's better against Messiah than he is against like Chaos Breaker. I said, but. Um, and the Chaos player will slip up maybe and give you a shot, and that's why we still have him to drop in there and do it. But um, And in other matchups, he's still a good card, but usually you prefer to stride uh, your Gluttonies. Which, speaking of, uh, four of our big guy Gluttony, the card that wins us most of our games. This card is super good. Super good. Um... Then we have one of our GB8. This GB8, like, some people don't think it's good, but if you don't think it's good, I don't think you've ever actually gone into this thing. This thing is actually terrifyingly strong. Um, it's a very good card, honestly. It doesn't look good on paper, but when you actually drop it, and you're not, like, a dumbass, and you can, like, combo off this thing, this thing is super good. And then... Or uh, one drachma, because he's drachma. Um, catch your opponent in an awkward situation, drop this card, win the game. It's a good card. Uh, then for G guards, they've changed a little bit. Playing one of the 20k shield, one grotto gigant, and I'm playing two bu bullish. Uh, usually, I only drop. Uh, most of the time, I just use this card. Um, he's the best of the uh, three options. Um, Situational times, he's Genga's good, but yeah. And uh, where's the last one? Oh, the one Seabreeze. Almost forgot. Because Generation Break. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Uh, I'm sure some people won't disagree, or will disagree, I should say. They're going to probably uh, really disagree on cutting this down to two. Um, but, like I, like I said, like, in my experience, I don't play against, like, a lot of, like, Chaos players that are that bad that they won't realize they need to keep my whole field locked. And in those situations, this card hasn't been helpful. Um, and since I, and, like, if I wanted to play, like, this card... I wanted to play the GB8, which are both, like, good, and they give me more versatility. Um, that means I had to cut stuff, so. That's it for now. Uh, thank you guys for watching.